Hey guys, my name is Shayla. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, I talk about motherhood, I talk about pregnancy, we do things kind of natural, kind of hippie, eco-friendly, granola. If you're into that, please subscribe. If you're not new here, please like the video. Thank you for coming back. I have an Instagram, hey Shayla, and a podcast, hey Shayla. Today, we're gonna talk about what I wish I knew before I started breastfeeding. Like, before I started breastfeeding when I was pregnant. Real quick though, side note. This happened like five minutes ago, so that's why I'm gonna tell you and it's somewhat relevant. Yesterday, I found baby bunnies when I was raking. And my neighbor was like, ooh, yeah, my dog just ate adult rabbit. And I was like, could it be mama? So I called a nature center nearby and I was like, what do I do? There's babies. He gave me a whole education on baby buddies. Basically, they can only have mother's milk for like a long time. So don't give them water. Just don't feed them because there's something, there's like a micro, I kind of blacked out when he was explaining it to me, but I was like, okay, don't feed them because he's like, they can get diarrhea and die. Okay, not going to feed them. And they can last a couple of days without milk. So he said, put an X with like some light twigs over the nest and then go back in 24 hours. If the X is still there, mama didn't come. They are now orphans. We can do something about it. If the X is gone, then they probably, mom probably came. So I was like, okay. So I went out to go put the X on and one of the baby bunnies was out. Just like out. So I called the guy back and I was like, one of the babies is out. And he's like, that's not a good sign. That means that they're looking for food. So we can probably assume that mom is gone. So there's like an, a rehabilitation center around here that is working on baby bunny formula so that they can feed them and rehabilitate them. And so as soon as Ezzy's done napping, uh, I'm gonna be bringing the baby bunnies to the rehabilitation center to get fed by stuffed animals and live. So I feel good about that. He was like, you can also do nothing. But I'm like running around the yard catching these babies. I'm like, it's okay, baby. I'm a mama too. Here's my baby because as he was on my back and my neighbors probably think I'm nuts but it's just a perfect little segue into today into the video right now which is talking about breastfeeding quickly I exclusively breastfeed I stay home with my kids so I don't have to like pump because I have to go back to work if you have to do that obviously you have to pump but I was like oh the pump and the bottles and whatever that's so much work I'd rather just put them on the boob so much easier but I'm pretty sure that's what gave me anxiety like no one else could comfort them both of my two girls until they were like a year old which is what we just hit with my second I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old so what I'm trying to say with, with that is I don't have a lot of pumping information for you this is gonna be mostly for breastfeeding getting your supply all that stuff so the first thing that I would recommend is while you're still pregnant find a lactation consultant so you can either call the the hospital that you're delivering at and say do you have a lactation consultant I did at mine and so the day after she was born the lactation came in checked the latch gave me some tips if your hospital doesn't then you need to find one find one before you have your baby because once your baby comes your brain is just scattered so I'm going to go over products that I would recommend for breastfeeding and then like the things that you really didn't know. So when your baby's born, there's a few things that you should do right away and the things that happen that you don't expect, that's coming after. So first thing, I used reusable nursing pads because I was just leaking all the time for like four or six months. I was like, am I ever gonna stop leaking? You do eventually, but I was leaking for a long time. So I didn't wanna use disposable pads. So I got the reusable ones. Bamboobies are amazing. The nighttime ones, they're a little bit expensive, but like you're going to use them. I used them for six months and then I use them for my next kids. I use the overnight ones because the heart shapes to me seem strange and it's the most absorbent, but you want to make sure that you wash them frequently because they can get moldy, I guess. I just lived in those for a few months. Uh, the other thing, the Hakka. This video is actually sponsored by Hakka, which was serendipitous. They re reached out and I was like, I'm already going to be talking about you in this video. So this is perfect. This is a breast pump. Use it when you need to express milk. I got an oversupply from this thing the first time I used it. So I asked them, I was like, why did I get an oversupply using this thing? And they were like, well, you want to use it only when you need to express milk. Because what I would do is I would put it on and then nurse my baby. So I was telling my body, yo, we got twins. We are feeding twins. Let's go. Not, I'm going to feed my baby and then I'm going to like pump a little bit if I need to. Or like my baby's asleep or my baby's sick and she's not nursing as much and I need to pump. So how you use this thing, you take it like this. You peel back this thing. And then you give this a little squeeze. Put it on your boob here. I wish I had one of those fake boobs. Put your nipple in the middle, have it go flop around your boob, and then you it'll be squeezed, and then it's gonna pull the milk out. Like a shower head. I was shocked. I was like, Seth, come look at this. The milk is just coming out like a shower head, like super handy. They have a suction cup on here now. I always like got a coffee mug to set it in because this thing would just spill sometimes. And then washing. Apparently you're supposed to wash it after every use. I have not done that. I did not do that. It's not great because bacteria and stuff can grow in it. It can also get cloudy. So this is not just because it's dirty, it sometimes just gets cloudy. So this is mine, and this is the one that Hakka just sent me. So you can see there's a difference in the cloudiness. They said all you have to do is boil it and throw some like vinegar in there, come out like this, done. You can get those 
steamer bags that you like put a little water in and throw them in the microwave and um, sanitize them like that. Or you can just do hot water and soap. So it's kind of whatever you feel comfortable with, whatever you want to do. And with my second, I got the ladybug, which is this. You can see there's a little hole. That's where your nipple goes. You're going to give this thing a little squeeze, stick it on there, and then it sticks on there, and then you can just put it in your bra. So you can feed on this side, have this on your bra on this side. So it's just catching the letdown. It's not doing the shower head pull. This, I would get a few ounces in a feeding sometimes. This, I would get a few ounces in like a whole day. But hi, that's fantastic. I would just fill up a bag and then throw it in the freezer. At the top here, there's this little thing, and it's a hole so that you just pour it into whatever bag you have. Oh, silverette. So I was really excited to use them this time because with my first breastfeeding experience, my nipples got chapped, they're bleeding, not great. So then you can buy these little silver things, put this on your baby registry, and it's supposed to help heal your nips, your chapped nips. I didn't have any of that with my second baby. I was like waiting for it, waiting for it to happen, and it just didn't happen, and I was like, what? And they're like, yeah, if it hasn't happened yet, you're good. So apparently you can breastfeed without any pain as well. I didn't think that that was a thing. Earth Mama nipple butter is amazing. I've tried multiple nipple butters as well. And it's my favorite. And then I bought like two little ones. We'll put one in the diaper bag, kept one like at my home breastfeeding station. I just like the consistency of it. And then afterwards you can use it as like chapstick or you can use it as a hand balm or you can use it as on your baby, whatever. Or you can use your own breast milk. <sighs> So you can just squeeze a little breast milk out, rub it on your nip, and that should help to heal your nipple. It's so cool. All right, let's get to like the mind-bending things that you don't know about until you know about them. So you wanna try and latch your baby as soon as you can. Like as soon as they're out. When my baby was born, both of their umbilical cords were short, so they like sat on my belly until the cord stopped pulsing, and then we did like delayed cord clamping so that all the blood from the placenta could get into the baby. Helps with iron levels, whatever. Cut the cord. Then came up to my boob. Your nipple releases a smell similar to the smell of amniotic fluid. So your baby's attracted to your boob right away. Your nipples, if you haven't noticed, get dark. Just to say, hello, here I am, come nurse. Baby will be attracted to your boob and latch, which is kind of just mind bending. So if you have a C-section or whatever, if your baby can't latch immediately, just get them to latch as soon as possible. They're probably gonna not latch right, but that's because they're brand new and they have no idea what they're doing and they're just kind of whatever. Obviously listen to your lactation consultant, but like trust the process. My podcast, Hey Shayla, episode eight and episode nine are really good ones for supply. It's how to establish your, a supply in the first six weeks and then like over and under supply and kind of like what to do. Natalie Johnson, she's an IBCLC. She said for the first six weeks, you don't really want to use a nook. You don't really want to use a swaddle because those two things prevent baby from saying, hey, I'm hungry or I need to be comforted because they're already comforted. Sometimes I'm like, man, I wish I she would just take a nook and she would just chill out and not be on me. So there's like pros and cons to all of it. So you have to decide what feels right to you. For me, it felt the most instinctual to just respond to my baby when they needed me. And that was stressful for me. So I don't know the right advice for you. My advice is to figure out what feels right for you. Thing number four, when my baby was born, they handed her to me and they go, They're gonna, she's going to change a lot in the next 24 hours. And I was like, do you think she's ugly? Why'd she say that? They just came out of the birth canal. They're real puffy. They've got like water retention. They've just been like not breathing, but just connected to liquid to you. They're going to lose weight. Expect it, know it, It's that's normal. And then you're gonna nurse them back to their birth weight. It's gonna take a couple, couple days. Don't freak out, don't panic. If you wanna breastfeed, just keep breastfeeding, keep doing it. Cause people are like, well, how am I gonna know how much milk they get? It doesn't matter. They are gonna get the milk they need to get. Watch their diapers. Are they having at least six wet diapers? in a 24 hour period. If they are, you know that the output is good, so the input is good. That's it. I never knew how much m milk my babies were getting. They never latched for 20 minutes. Some babies latched for 45 minutes, some babies latched for five to 10 was mine. And I sometimes would go on one side, sometimes would go on the other side. I didn't care about like evenness. I would just be like, okay, this time we need to go on this side and just do a little boob check. We'll literally feel this one's more full. We're gonna go here. I say trust the process, so have your default be trust the process. And then if they're not having wet diapers, then you need to figure it out. Don't worry until there's something to worry about. Some women literally cannot make milk. There's so many variables that can happen, but in the beginning, try to release all the anxiety. Know that your baby will alert you when they're hungry. As long as they're having at least like six to eight diapers a day, they're getting enough input and their weight is going up. And once they get back to birth weight, you don't need to wake them up anymore. They will wake you up when they need to wake up. Their literal only job is to survive and you are the key to that survival. <laughs> I just interviewed somebody who had a baby in New York who was like, yep, wake up the baby every two to three hours to make sure they're getting enough food. And they suggested that even after baby hit birth weight. So she was born, lost weight, 
went back up to birth weight and they were like, yep, keep waking him up. The woman on my podcast had her baby in New York and then had another one in New Zealand. And she's like, should I wake him up every two to three hours? And she's like, no, why would you do that? Let her sleep if she's, if she's fine. There's something called cluster feeding and you don't know about cluster feeding until you know about cluster feeding. Your baby's feeding like every few hours, they do it for however long they do it. And then all of a sudden your baby is like fussy every 20 to 30 minutes and they are like wanting the boob every 20 to 30 minutes, give them the boob. This is a growth spurt. So they are stimulating and they're like trying to get milk and you're gonna be like, am I not making enough milk? No, they're getting ready to need more milk. So they're telling your body, yo, I need more milk. I'm gonna nurse a lot so that the body goes, oh, we're not making enough. We need to make more. And then it starts to make more because you're still in that six week period where your body's like trying to work with your baby to find the right amount that it needs. So cluster feeding is real. It's so frustrating, but it's literally by design to like tell your body, okay, here we go. We're cluster feeding. That means we've got a lot. We need to make more milk because we're about to hit a growth spurt. So. If you know that ahead of time, it makes accepting it a little bit easier. Number six, there's something called the witching hour. The sleep consultant I work with said that the witching hour is not a thing. And if you've experienced the witching hour, you know it's a thing. So basically she said that baby's just too tired. With Aaliyah, my first, her bedtime was like at five or 5.30. And she would sleep until like five or 5.30 in the morning. It worked for us, but like we just skipped it. We skipped the whole witching hour because we put her to bed early. And that's what happened with my second. She would just cry in the afternoons and it was just awful. So we tried to move her bedtime way up to like five or six and it helped so much with the witching hour. We got her to sleep before it all happened. So if you're experiencing that witching hour and you're like, what is happening? Know that it is a real thing. That is, it's gnarly time, but your baby just might be tired. So try and like get them to sleep before that witching hour. And sometimes it starts at four. So you're like, how am I going to do this? I don't know. Just, just do your best to try and get them to sleep before. Breast milk is like mm, liquid gold literally it obviously feeds the baby it can help with your chap nips it can help with cradle cap if you rub it in there it can help with help with eczema our daughter had clogged tear ducts i would just put some breast milk in her eye and just like squirt it in there and kind of like let it sit i have friends that put breast milk up their baby's noses to help like decongest if they're all congested breast milk can help with diaper rash like it literally i remember watching a show of like african mothers who were like spraying their babies with breast milk and then like wiping off their face and i was like there's gotta Thing number eight, breast milk changes in the morning time, in the nighttime, when your kids are sick. Apparently it's different with boys and girls. So if you are pumping, make sure that you're writing. This is AM milk, this is PM milk, because nighttime milk helps with melatonin production. Daytime milk is for daytime. When they're sick, they have more antibodies. So sometimes when um, Aaliyah and Esme, my three and one year old are sick, I will pump and feed it to the three-year-old because I'm like, here's some antibodies to help with this cold because I am the giver of life. So whenever I'm sick, I always write on the thing like what I'm sick with, like stuffy nose or COVID or the flu or whatever. And I would write it on there so that, I don't know, if they're sick again, I can give them that breast milk if I have to, but it's just different. And I've seen like COVID milk be like green. It's just wild. It's wild how much it changes. Like the consistency of fat is different. Number nine, learn the cuddle curl. This is a breastfeeding position that I feel like is not talked about. I am a huge proponent of co-sleeping and bed sharing and that you literally get more sleep if you do it safely. You and your baby's sleep cycles begin to sync. So when they're in light sleep, you're in light sleep. So you both kind of wake up at the same time. They look for you, you nurse them, you both fall back to sleep. It's incredible. There are things like some women should not co-sleep, but it's called the safe seven. But I have a video on co-sleeping and how to do it safely. I have an entire hour long podcast about like how it all works and just like to put you and your partner at ease. Cuddle curl. So stand up for this. So it's basically you in the fetal position, kind of like this is fetal position, but you're just gonna have your arm here, your baby's gonna be here, nursing, your legs up like this, so you can't roll over, both legs are up, but obviously I can't do that in this little demonstration. They just nurse. And I like to put a pillow behind me so that I can like lean back a little bit and nurse. When you are exhausted and you need a little breather, sometimes I do it on the couch because I'm so tired and I just need to lay down while I nurse her, it's just a game changer. So please look up the cuddle curl and learn how to do it. And it's a safe way to sleep with your baby. This also like sleeping and napping with them also helps your supply. It just like puts you guys in sync. Oh, and then you get a clogged up. I think there's like, sunflower oil. There's like a supplement you can take for clogged ducts. Your baby, really good tool for um, pulling clogged ducts, putting their nose to where the clogged duct is. Or like mastitis. A lot of people are like, oh, I can't feed my baby if I have mastitis, it's an infection. They are the best thing to pull that infection out and it's not gonna like give them an infection. I also know the people that use their partners 
it's up to you and your partner. Last thing, thing number 10. If you have any problems with breastfeeding at any point, please go see a lactation consultant. Your pediatric dentist will do anything with like lip tongue ties. Um, my first had a little one, but she's like, if you're not in any pain and they're thriving and like gaining weight, you don't have to do anything about it. So we chose not to. It is what it is. I was just like, we're just gonna let it be. If we have to do something about it later, we'll do it, but I don't wanna do something now and then it was unnecessary. So a whole nother topic. There's like a lot around the lip ties and tongue ties. But if you're having any sort of pain, anything that breastfeeding is not going well, you just need some support, go find a lactation consultant. Also, Natalie has a free breastfeeding group. I think they meet on Wednesdays. I don't know, it changes sometimes, but they meet once a week for a couple hours where you get to ask your breastfeeding question and like connect with other moms who are breastfeeding moms and have community in that. So Community Carriage House is that Instagram. Go find it and you can get in there groups if you need some extra help. So those are the things that I wanted to let you know about. Nurse baby as soon as you can. They're gonna drop some birth weight. Cluster feeding is a thing. And then some products that can be really helpful. So go check out Haka, put it on your baby registry. And please comment below with anything else that you were shocked about learning breastfeeding, because I'm, I'm positive I forgot some. Thanks guys, see you next time. Bye.